Hello friends, I hope you're enjoying my videos on options. Now in this video, I'm going to share a strategy with you which is used by almost all big shot investors, high net worth individuals, institutional investors including DIIs, FIIs, hedge funds and pension funds etc. and also our own Sarkari government Navratnas the PSUs which are uh, dealing in billions of dollars worth of uh, 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 commodities, hard assets, etc. Now, I'll give you a helpful hint. This is a strategy that I have been talking about in my videos and especially in my live mint column, which is India's first and only media column that provides statistical inputs to its readers. Now, in the year 2020, we were all taken aback by the forceful uh, uh, kind of jolt that we received from the COVID based lockdowns. The markets fell initially for a couple of days or a couple of weeks rather. And do you know this strategy yielded billions of dollars in profits and some funds, some hedge funds walked home with more than 3000%, yes, 3000% in profits in a matter of few weeks. Before you accuse me of talking through my hat, I assure you of one thing. I don't resort to clickbait. I don't sensationalize and I don't sell or provide any services whatsoever. In the description below this video and in the pinned comment below this video is a hyperlink to Reuters article which will give you all the details that I am telling you in this video. So there is no fibbing and gaslighting here at all. Now you see while I was researching why crude oil has gone into negative and you all remember in April 2020 oil prices actually went into a nosedive till uh, the futures contracts were trading in the negative. And yet companies and countries, so Petróleos Mexicanos, which is the national oil company of Mexico, was very, very belligerent and very, very adamant that it would continue to sell crude oil irrespective of the price. And it would also flagrantly violate o OPEX export quotas. Now it got me scratching my head. Hey, why? Why sell oil at such low prices? And this is something that I keep talking about in my Telegram channel. Do join in. The contact details are on your screen right now, wherein I share all my thoughts under one roof, which is why I say I don't agree with your average expert in commodities, because I feel there is more to the energy markets, especially uh, uh, oil and gas then that meets the eye. And to my utter fascination, Petróleos Mexicanos was employing this very strategy, which I'm going to share with you. It's so simple that its simplicity defined itself. A fourth or fifth standard school going child will be able to understand this strategy. Now, this strategy is called the tail risk hedge strategy. Now you get it. I've been talking about it since months on my Telegram channel, in my videos and in my live mint column. What does it entail and what else do you need to know about it? Now, you see, Petróleos Mexicanos or Pemex, as it is called in short, has its headquarters in a villa. A villa in Spanish is called Hacienda. So Wall Street also likes to call this strategy the Hacienda Hedge. Now, what Mexico does, and now it's not just Mexico, it's almost all oil companies, big shot investors in equity shares, commodities, HNIs, UHNIs means high net worth individuals, ultra high net worth individuals, etc. Even your domestic mutual funds. What do they do? See, in the case of Petróleos Mexicanos, what they do is if oil is trading at $80 a barrel, they go to Wall Street and find out which are the lowest strike price put options available. Why the lowest strike price put options? Because the premium is dirt cheap. And the US is spoiled for choice. You have multiple products in which you can bet on shorts. 
You can buy reverse ETFs. Now, ETF is something which is backed by delivery of that underlying product. So you have gold and silver ETFs. You have index ETFs in India. But do you know in the US you have reverse ETFs? These are short ETFs. So when you buy that ETF, you are actually betting that the market will go down. So you have reverse ETFs. You have credit default swaps. So you are actually betting that what credit default swap you're buying on a particular asset, it will actually come down. And then again, you always have put options. So what Petroleos Mexicanos does and all these institutional traders do, they find if, if the asset is here, they go to the lowest strike price put option and buy these put options at pennies to the dollar by the truckloads. The actual net amount will not be too much because the premium will be in very, very small, tiny fractions of the at the money strikes. Now, they keep doing this till the market one fine day falls and suddenly you have a multiplication in the options premium. Can you imagine if you had these tail risk hedges as I have been warning you in my newspaper column? in my videos that, hey, my online family must have these tail risk hedges. And if you had these tail risk hedges on 4th of June 2024, when the election results were announced, can you imagine the kind of money you would have made? I saw stock prices of many PSUs go down 18, 20, 22, 25 percent. BHEL went down 25 percent. The options, the put options premium went through the roof. Guys who bought tail risk hedges on or before the 4th of June 2024 had a life changing experience. Now these trades come very, very rarely. By very rarely would mean maybe once in 12 months, maybe once in 15 months. But when they do, the disciplined and patient traders invariably walks home with bags full of money. A uh, caveat here. This is derivatives trading. Unless you do it right and unless you do it under expert supervision, derivative trading with or without supervision as well is a highly risky undertaking and do not resort to it unless you understand the risk and the metrics and you are experienced in doing the same. That said, let me now share how the strategy actually works, what you need to do and how you're going to go about doing it. Now take a look at uh, some of these hedge funds who you will find in the Reuters article in the hyperlink below who actually struck gold. Universa Investments LP, Lions Crest Capital, Capstone Investment Advisors, 36 South Capital Advisors, Cambria Tail Risk ETF and the list is long and distinguished. But it was Pemex or Petroleos Mexicanos that actually took home the prom queen. They took everything, the cake, the hamper, the table and even the house itself. And after that, everybody does it. Whether it's Saudi Aramco, whether it's Indian Oil Corporation, whether it's Bharat Petroleum, Hindustan Petroleum or ONGC, we all do tail risk edges. Now, how does it work? Like I told you, you will buy deeply, deeply out of money put options available at pennies. By buying put options, you're going long on puts, which means going short, actually. Now, like I said, in the Western countries, you can buy long tenure put options. Six months, 12 months, 15, 18, 24 months. But we in India have a problem. In many cases, beyond the second month or the mid month, there is no liquidity in the far month. So what you will do is either buy the mid month or if there is no liquidity in the mid month, buy the prompt month, the very first month, let it expire useless by the next month, whenever the uh, month that you have bought reaches an expiry of that derivative cycle. Before you tell me, Vijay, I'll be writing options premium off every month and I think I'm going to lose a lot of money. Please be patient. There's more to it than that meets the eye. Well, the idea actually is 
that you keep buying these puts at pennies to the dollar which are deeply out of money till someday when the price actually comes down sharply like it happened on 6th of June. Now we all know that bull markets are invariably followed by deep corrections or even shallow corrections but corrections do come. Now does it mean that you have to basically lose a lot of money before you make a lot of money? Not necessarily. Bear with me. Who is this strategy for? Now this strategy is for the deep pocketed, patient and thoughtful traders and investors of course. Now you want protection from shocks to your capital which is why you're doing it. But if you're going to be holding say 50 shares of any company and that company happens to be in uh, the derivative list, believe me, it's not worth your while to resort to tail risk hedges. The effort that you're going to put in is not worth your while if you have 25, 30 or 50 shares of that particular company. There has to be some critical size before which you should be uh, uh, deploying these tail risk hedges. Now, how much premium? Should you pay and should you go in all out from the very beginning or should you have a different strategy? Now you see I as a trader and I've been trading these markets since 1986. This is my 38th year in uh, a trading financial markets. Over a period of time, I have realized one thing. The amount of profit that I will make and take home is not something that I can ever predict or control. There is only one thing that is in my control and I try to keep it strictly reined in. And that thing is my expense, whether it is lifestyle living expense or it is trading expense. So what I would suggest is don't buy put options by the truckloads from the very first month because you might have to buy these put options month after month. Now, when the market is going up like it is now, initially you might start with small lots. In the next month might be slightly bigger. Third month may be a little bigger so that the premium that you're decaying and it will decay. Options are decaying assets. Every month you will be writing off. Maybe it's a pennies to the dollar where the premium is concerned, but that's a lot of pennies going in there. All right. And when the market is actually saturated at higher points, at that point in time, you should ideally have the biggest exposure. So this is something that I have been telling you even about bonds, laddering. So you're basically laddering and scaling your uh, exposure small in the beginning and scaling it very marginally as you go higher and higher. Now, this is being sketchy. You will accuse me of saying, you're not giving me an absolute number and hey, you're right. So now, what happens about how much you should deploy? I would say you have a portfolio. You know the dividends declared by these companies and therefore you know your dividend yield. Now, hypothetically, these figures are hypothetical. Now, just remember, you have a portfolio which has a value at cost of one crore. That is 10 million rupees. And you're expecting a dividend yield of 3%. So which means you're going to have in, in, uh, inflows of 3 lakh rupees or 300,000 rupees by way of dividend. You should target paying these tail risk hedge premium somewhat close to 3 lakh rupees. Possibly the same or lower, but hey, we don't know whether the market premium is going to rise or fall at a future date. So let's keep it approximate here. Try not to go out of pocket by a very large amount. So your dividends will fund your tail risk hedges. To that extent, once you have a portfolio, you should not be going net out of pocket by putting in any more money to even buy tail risk hedges. All right, it's just a question of uh, cash flow. You will be paying premium on these uh, put options every month, but your dividend might come once, twice, or maybe uh, thrice a year. That's fine. But net net, you're controlling your outgo or your expense by way of uh, put option premium 
more or less to the dividend amount. Now, if you're going to get a dividend amount, like I said, of 3 lakh rupees, maybe in the first quarter, which is uh, three months, you should be deploying something like, say, 30, 40 or 50,000 rupees quarter. In the next quarter, maybe 70, 80, 90,000 rupees. In the third quarter, maybe a little higher. And the biggest amount would be in the fourth quarter because the market is rising. So the probability of a fall becomes richer or better when a substantial rally has already occurred. This way, you can actually have an intelligent or a sensible system of spacing out how much of a check you're going to write at periodic intervals. So you see, if there is a problem, statistics and mathematics provides a solution. And we are here to provide you solutions. I'm sure you will agree that this kind of a 2, 3 or 4% uh, uh, and especially if it is covered by your dividend yield is a very, very small and reasonable amount to pay for buying a possibility of an outsized return at a future date, which is what these hedge funds have realized to their amazement. Look at this chart, which I have uh, uh, taken from that uh, uh, Reuters article. These are the outsized returns that have been made by tail risk hedge index funds. If you notice something, you will instantly realize that the returns made by these tail risk hedges were significantly higher than the returns made by short sellers in the 2008 global financial crisis. Which means if you've seen the Hollywood blockbuster movie, The Big Short, it shows John Paulson and uh, Dr. Burry making outsized returns. But that was 2008. In 2020, when COVID lockdown started and the markets nosedived, the returns made by these hedge funds made the returns of 2008 look like a walk in the park. Now, that's the kind of serious money I'm talking about. Billions of dollars being taken home by the smart guys. Now, since the markets are a zero-sum game, somebody's gain is somebody's loss. The smarter guys who resorted to the stale risk strategy took the profit away from the retail guy who saw their portfolios bleed. Exactly what happened on 4th of June 2024. The losses of millions of small investors went to a small percentage of people who deployed these tail risk hedges. And this is something I have been writing about in my live mint column since at least six months now. Friends, I talked about reverse ETFs, credit default swaps and structured derivative products that are available in the United States. Will they ever, ever be available in India? I think yes. Why am I saying that? Because India is a hot spot of global capital inflows. You're going to have all kinds of people coming into this country. It's not just buy and hold delivery based investors. You're going to have high frequency traders. You're going to have artificial intelligence uh, fueled uh, systems traders. You're going to have hedge funds. You're going to have uh, vulture traders. And these guys will want a complete range of products that they are used to having in the United States before they set up shop and bring their dollars in India. And guess what? Our financial system will have to provide these instruments, derivative structured instruments to them, which is why I want my online family to be prepared in advance whenever these instruments come. What do I think is the future? In one word, I would say exciting. I'm pretty excited because if you're connected with me on social media, I have been telling you that I expect pro-cyclicality in financial markets in 2025 and beyond. I'm recording a video about what pro-cyclicality is. You can see the thumbnail here. The video is under production. It will be released very, very shortly. 
relax pro cyclicality does not mean a 2008 or a 2020 like crash or even a june 2024 like crash all it means is that the market structure will change and when the structure changes you must adjust your sales as per the blowing winds at point in time so i'm very excited that we are going to be adjusting our sales to the market that's going to adjust to the inflows of high frequency desks algo traders artificial intelligence traders and we are going to be rubbing shoulders with the best of the best that the world has to offer in terms of traders you would have heard of an old saying chance favors the prepared mind we are prepared with the stale risk strategy so all i will say to the market is hey bring it on baby we are ready friends before i sign off from this video a reminder to subscribe to my youtube channel if you haven't already done so click on the bell icon to receive instant alerts about fresh videos being put up out here in the comment segment do let me know what you think of my work how it helps you become a better trader and what future videos would you want me to cover to help you become a better trader friends before i proceed further a request i don't want any money from you i don't want anything from you i do not believe in providing paid services but my videos take a lot of time effort and energy including money it would help me a lot if you help me to reach out to a wider audience by sharing these videos with smart traders like yourselves, your friends, your family, your social media groups on WhatsApp, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, etc. I'm putting in the effort to make these cutting edge videos which are not being made by anybody else. At least make it worth my while by helping me reach out to a wider audience. If you can help me do that, I would greatly appreciate it. Friends, I thank you for being with me patiently in this video. Till we meet again in my next this is Vijay Bambani signing off for now. Have a very, very profitable day ahead. Take care. Bye-bye.